What is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. I'm Andrew. And I'm David. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about, we're going to live follow what happens on Twitter for the next 45 minutes, and that's <laughs> all we're going to talk about. Just kidding. That would be impossible. Everything would be outdated by the time this goes live. Uh, no, we're going to talk about some interesting concepts, actually. Uh, how Xiaomi put out this little idea of some, some extra camera lenses on a smartphone, how it might be kind of cool. Also, how Apple may have made noise cancellation worse. You might have seen some headlines about mm -hmm. that. We're going to talk about it. And also, what in the world is matter? But first, no, seriously, let's talk about Twitter for a second. For, just, a second just a yeah, second. Just a second. Just like it's been absolute chaos. So uh, from the top of the show, the reason we're not talking about Twitter all the time is, number one, I made a video which I think concisely summarizes my general thoughts on Twitter, what I have seen, what I'm hoping to see, and as someone who really likes Twitter, uh, some suggestions. It's like a, so, a cry out to like, please don't, I, don't die Twitter. There are like, whenever I make a product suggestion, I find that there are real product managers who like work on these products that see these things. Obviously Elon's in charge of Twitter, but there's still people who work on Twitter stuff that like take suggestions and Elon does follow me on Twitter. So I was just like, here's the, here's the stuff I'm seeing and what I'm thinking. And then if I tried to like cover all the updates of things that are changing on Twitter since then, I would never be up to date because there's too many of them. Yeah. So I think we're just going to leave it at that. Like the last thing that happened, for example, Five is, minutes ago. Yeah, literally as as we were walking into this room here, it was like they added a second badge briefly for a few hours where you'd have a verified badge, but then there was a second on underneath it that had another badge and said official. So everyone who had a verified badge before had a verified badge, and that would be the Twitter Blue verified human badge. And then there was an additional badge that would say you're an official person, meaning you're a high profile someone who would normally have had the old verified badge. <laughs> Like, you're the only official one of that person. And so some YouTubers, some journalists, some blogs started getting that official badge. And uh, probably about an hour and a half ago, I tweeted a screenshot of it because I had two badges now on my profile. And uh, then an hour later, it was gone. And they just deleted them from the entire website. And that's what happened. That's literally what happened. They just appeared and disappeared. It yeah, tried something. The product manager, project manager for that official badge, she tweeted out this long thread about like why they're thinking about doing this and like what their opinion on it is and why they're specifically going with a second badge. And that tweet was relevant for about an hour and a half. Yeah. And well, then, she did tweet it 18 hours ago. So it was like it oh. started last night. And then, yeah, now okay. less than 24 hours later, all of that means nothing. I saw her tweet on the train this morning. And then by the time I yeah. got to the office, it was gone. <laughs> so. I think there's a good amount of West Coast people who are going to wake up <laughs> who were double double verified overnight for some time and had no idea what happened. Never saw it. Never even got to see it. Amazing. But I have a screenshot of when I was double verified. Yeah, yeah. You, so. you can remember the one hour yeah. that you were double verified. Yeah, it really happened. Uh, anyway, so that's that's Twitter. We'll, we'll, you know, if something else happens, maybe we'll we'll have like we'll ring like an alarm in the middle of the yeah. podcast, like something new happened on Twitter. Let's talk about it. I think Ellis is keeping an eye on it. And maybe you have yeah, that's a Twitter, Twitter alarm. Sound. Alert! If something worthy of pausing happens, just sound the alarm, and we'll we'll see what's trending on Twitter at that moment. Anyway. Um, let's talk about this Xiaomi concept because it was kind of interesting. What do you want to break it down? Because it was first like a leaked thing, and then it was it was yeah. confirmed, and now Xiaomi's teasing it a little bit. Yeah. So Ice Universe on Twitter, or I guess Universe Ice, as he always usually does. Um, um, sorry, I just like how the tweet the tweet in here that you screenshotted has the official mark. Oh yeah. It, so I screenshotted it this morning before it was taken away. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, so he leaked this screenshot of this basically Xiaomi 12S Ultra, which had a full Leica lens attached to the back of it. And everyone started like freaking out. And pretty soon after that, Xiaomi officially put out their concept phone, which is the, 12, the Xiaomi 12S Ultra concept. Uh, effectively, it's like exactly what you would think, where they added a second 1.0 type sensor to the phone. Mm -hmm. And then that sensor is not covered by any rear elements. It's not covered by any glass. Okay. It just has the sapphire glass over the top of it. And then there's an adapter that sl slaps onto the back of the phone, and then you can put a full Leica lens on top of that. Yeah. Um, so you're basically just like condensing the light with way more glass with a full Leica lens to get a better image, which adds a lot of different things because things like depth of field are a function of the 
amount of Z depth that you can have between the sensor and the lens. Yeah. So, I mean, you're going to get better image quality. You're going to get better, like, real depth of field instead of, like, bad portrait mode and all mm -hmm. this stuff. And I think they just mostly did this because they have that new partnership with Leica now, um, because Huawei and Leica are no longer best friends. Now Xiaomi yeah. is Leica's mm -hmm. best friend. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I think that Xiaomi likes to move fast and break things, just like Twitter. And uh, they create a lot of random stuff. Um, so this seems very interesting. We have uh, we've seen other stuff like this before. Yeah, sort of. Like we saw the red hydrogen, mm -hmm. which is what which we all the the beautiful well. giant stinker of the yeah. red hydrogen. Um, <laughs> that was which, allegedly someday going to get. That's something the problem. Like this. Was it, like it was supposed to have a module. I think that would have a sensor, and then that sensor would be able to put a lens on it. We never got is that any modulars. Was? I think that's what it was because the yeah. regular camera sucked on it. Because I remember I was really really excited because I used to use all Fuji cameras and Fuji lenses, um. and it, that was part of the compatibility list. It was that you could use like Fuji lenses. Like I think that. they originally said a couple uh, of like ideas. modules that they were going to have, but there was nothing to go directly lens onto the smartphone camera aspect of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no, none of that ever actually got made either. No, and they, they, they kept promising to me because I made my first review video and there was like one module, I think, the, the, the pins on the back of the phone. And I was like, yeah, so there's no modules. If you're going to like sell the phone with the modules as a feature, maybe you should have like a couple first party modules out and they're like, oh yeah, trust me, this next one's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be the camera thing, that never happened. But one, the other one that I that I thought was cool is what Sony did a couple years ago, which was an Xperia smartphone that had, it was again, it would attach essentially an entire digital camera to the back of the phone, but it was in the form factor of like just adding a lens to the back, you would attach it with a bracket when it touched the back of your phone, it would pair to your phone via NFC, mm -hmm. and your phone is basically a Bluetooth viewfinder for this nice sensor with nice glass. That was kind of cool. Yeah, uh, It didn't sell. Most people just use their smartphone cameras anyway, but it was kind of cool. So it was like the Samsung Galaxy Zoom, except you ripped off the zoom lens yeah. and made yeah. it separate. Yeah, And then it's still like nice glass, I guess, is nicer glass, <laughs> but this is like you're using yeah. glass that people are actually using this on like Photo cameras. Nice cameras. Yeah, these are seven to $8,000 $8, lenses. That's <laughs> so yeah, crazy. It's yeah. not like an F5.6 to F8, like, yeah. I yeah. think the most important thing about this is that it's a concept, and there's a lot of baggage that comes with the word concept. One is like when you go to CES and you see a bunch of concept cars, you have no expectation of that car ever coming out, right? It's like a test thrown out into the winds by the manufacturer to just see what people think. Mm -hmm. And maybe they'll make something like this someday, but this is not a real product. Two, I don't think this will ever be a real product <laughs> because there's a bunch of things that are obviously very tough about it. It's more expensive to do something like this. The, the 12S Ultra already has an incredible camera and it's also a very expensive phone. And so to make this adjustment to it and sell it and sell lenses would just be a crazy expensive system, at which point you might as well just buy a camera, which most people will do. And then there's the physics question, which is a sensor this small with glass this big letting in this much light would actually create an effective depth of field of maybe like one to two inches. It would be an incredible shallow depth of field. Yeah, super shallow. So you get a lot of light in, but your your profile, your your picture of a face would be like the tip of the nose would be in focus. Yeah, you'd have to shoot open. at like F12 all the time. Yeah, it'd be tough. Yeah. So there's a bunch of reasons why I think it's going to be a concept and it's like Xiaomi going, oh, we thought of something and we're not going to make it, but we did kind of put all this work into engineering samples. Let's just like share the concept. Yeah. Remember the... One plus concept yes. phone yeah. at CES that one year. It basically oh. it took um, it had that special in that glass that can darken using yeah. electricity, electric current, and it basically created like an ND filter over the lens so that you could do long exposures and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They made a whole fuss about this, but of course they never launched it. That was actually this the first time I met you guys in yeah, person that was. too, because I left my tripod oh, <laughs> oh, at, yeah, at the one plus event. Yeah, I was yeah. on the other side of Vegas and I sprinted all the way back. <laughs> Like showed up and like, or like something a different hotel and yeah yeah, yeah. that was fun that but was um funny, yeah. it, it this is kind of cool and it, it doesn't look like they have to do that much you know like for a concept the Xiaomi 12 already looks like this right it's like a circular camera bump it's so close. it's not that much different of a form factor i would say though i agree with you i don't think we ever see this at best this is going to be like what was that one Sony Xperia that was like 
two thousand dollars and was supposed to be essentially like paired with an A7 and be like the extra viewfinder. Oh yeah, Xperia Pro. Remember? Xperia Pro. The Pro. This yeah. feels like at best could be one of those like insanely niche like like you're someone who has a like a camera already like you have these lenses so you don't have to pay a bunch for these but if you're bringing those lenses you're probably bringing your camera already right yeah, yeah. if you have to pack like two or three of these lenses yeah that's enough volume in your bag for the what, camera body a nice camera not that much yeah. more and yeah. Leica cameras are already fairly compact as it is so yeah. yeah i mean the kind of cool thing about this is a lot of mirrorless cameras are effectively just computers you know? This is yeah. why I want, like, so the Hasselblad UI on the back of their cameras is pretty good and, like, pretty smooth. But I keep saying, like, the Samsung Galaxy camera was ahead of its time. Because what we all really want is our phone, which we're really used to, to take mirrorless, incredible, like, photos that we see all the time with shallow depth of field and everything like that. So we keep trying to combine them. And, like, what if we bring, like, a lens from this world and just mount it on the back of our camera? And it's like we want the great cameras, but we want the UI of our phones. Yeah. It's like, if we find a good way to merge the two, we'll be set. I think what we need to do instead of building onto our phones is bring the phone UI to a nice camera. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Basically oh, make absolutely. it run Android and have a nice camera. Yeah, they all, all the UIs on all cameras, most cameras suck, yeah. uh, so except much for like, like Hasselblad and Red, basically. Uh, this sounds so much like legacy car manufacturers. <laughs> I was gonna say that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's three things you can count on the UI <laughs> sucking, which is cameras, <laughs> In in car infotainment yeah. systems and printers, it's those <laughs> uh, yeah. those three things. They'll never be good. There's yeah. just there's some law of the universe that prevents them from being kill good. all yeah. printers. Yeah. So I will say um, that I think that using physics to take photos is pretty much always the way, and that we in a lot of ways we have over computational photography our way into too far. You think? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hipster. <laughs> I mean, I don't photo? know if you look at if you look at modern pixel photos, they're like over sharpened and over contrasty, and that's just because like the hardware in other devices is getting better and the sensors are getting bigger mm -hmm. to the point where you don't need to lean into that processing as much. Like it saved bad processors or bad sensors, yeah, but it doesn't need that as much anymore. Obviously, like you guys said. If you're gonna already carry around these lenses, which are yeah. huge, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But mm -hmm. I'll play if I play devil's advocate. Yeah. I think, and we're this might be a spoiler alert. We're gonna do another blind smartphone camera test this year, and I have a feeling the ones that do a lot of computational photography are going to do well. Yeah, and that's like kind of what people. It's like appealing to what people want to see yeah. in their in their eyes. So yeah. it's like in order to get closer to the ones that have the physics advantage, you have to do computational photography. But it is, yeah, it is debatable. Like, are they going too far? Is it just bad computational photography? I don't think it's bad. I think it's just that what use we used to think was good now feels bad compared to everything else. Mm. I think it's just like comparatively. Yeah. But that this is also coming from someone who like I I want to be able to do a lot with my pictures and yeah, you know. So anyway, cool concept. Cool concept. Cool concept. We'll see if uh, Xiaomi follows up on it at any point in the future. I really want to hold one. Yeah. This entire thing in one hand. The yes, phone is There's already... a photo of it in, in the dock. Yeah. It is... The center <laughs> it looks of, like a thing. The center of gravity on that thing is probably just the lens. Yeah. So just, like, like, you probably just hold the lens and you just tap true. the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Well, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk about some other stuff. But before we do that, it's trivia time. And... Producer cam trivia. Producer time. cam. Oh, we should fire up the producer cam for the first time ever. Let's hit it. Amazing. Should you clap? <laughs> well, welcome. <laughs> That's the best possible beginning. That's our of producers producer making cam. their job as hard as possible. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing that to themselves. <laughs> uh, trivia time. Trivia time. Also, Bang. but yeah, Ellison. And welcome. Adam, welcome to being on camera on the podcast. Hi, folks. It's a good time. Yeah, we are now on camera for trivia and trivia only. And we both wore green sweaters completely on accident. That yeah. was not an accident. <laughs> no shot. <laughs> you knew there it was producer. No we know happening. Okay, trivia time. <laughs> <laughs> just green screen yourselves so that you're just floating heads. <laughs> oh, God, no. Okay. In 1999, a company called Zip2 was acquired by Compaq for $307 million. Which modern day tech juggernaut was one of the founders? All right. Okay, I, I, I know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Cool. Got it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> See you after break. break. Ah! <laughs> All right, welcome back. Um, I have a little news about Apple's noise canceling, and we've been seeing it for the last couple of weeks. Um, a few different things have happened, but people have been claiming, and this is a claim we've seen before, that their noise canceling on their AirPods Pro and their AirPods Max has gotten worse. Okay, this um, is this is one of those things I've seen headlines yes. and a couple of rogue tweets about, but I haven't actually investigated it. Okay, I do regularly fly with mm-hmm. AirPods Max, so I'm I'm interested. Okay, I'm going to try and there's a lot of different um, like theories and stuff out there. Okay. I'm going to try and say the facts first, and then we can go over the theories, and then we can go over what our theories are, and facts then Ellis can tell us why everyone's wrong. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Perk okay. Ellis was very heated about this this morning, yeah, yeah. so he'll come in. Okay. Um, so pretty much people started claiming, uh, I said this already, noise cancellation getting worse in AirPods. They think they noticed AirPods it. AirPods Max in particular. Max, but I think some people are also saying pros as well. Really? I think it's both of them. Yeah, oh. but I think Max are the ones that kind of sparked this very specific because what happened then is the update came out in May. A website called, I believe it's pronounced Ratings. It's oh, yeah. R-T-I-N-G-S. Mm-hmm. Um, and they did a test finally to kind of try and prove this. And it did seem like there was a slight change in the cancellation between, it says, there's a slight change in the canceling of noise between the mid bass to high bass range. A slight change in canceling of noise between mid bass and high bass. So, so okay. So there is so there's a some sort update, of a difference. Some update between. There's a firmware update in May okay. where this happened. Yeah. And that's when people started guessing it. And now it has led to, um, I think it was previously this week, there was a huge thread on our Apple mm-hmm. describing what's happening with a really kind of crazy theory as to why it's happening, which we can get to in a minute. Um, but like, this isn't the first time this has happened. This has happened on different bows. People with bows have said this before. I think Sony like a year or two ago, yeah. a lot of people said theirs got worse. Mm. The um, XM like threes, I think, mm. got an update and started to get worse. I'm just going to go over a couple of the theories that people think <laughs> why this might be happening. Okay. And then I kind of want to talk about it because it's also one of those things where when you're dealing with these small different noise cancellations, it's, it's things you hear. There's all kinds of different things that can affect that. There's placebo. If I tell you, you can tell someone your phone's feeling slower yeah. and then somebody might be like, oh, mine feels slower too. Yeah. Who, mm-hmm. who knows mm-hmm. if something actually, so we did get a test to prove there was a small change, but a lot of people are thinking it's potentially because of, and I think everyone who's used over-ear noise-canceling headphones and maybe even in-ears, that pressure feeling you get. Of like a really strong like, noise of cancellation? Like a, of like almost feeling like you're getting trapped inside of pressure because of the noise cancellation. It, yeah. it feels like you're getting covered up over your ears. So some people are thinking that potentially Apple made a slight change to try and reduce that feeling. Maybe they were getting complaints about noise that. pressure. Mm-hmm. Um we always have to talk about planned obsolescence. Um, this, I, I'm just talking about it. I'm Fair. not saying any. I'm. I'm just asking questions. Myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Um, Classic. You know. <laughs> but like, uh, there's there's always talked about planned obsolescence. There's people there's, who feel like Apple is trying to slowly at, work back to their next pair of headphones exactly. launching, and they have a big percentage difference in noise mm. cancellation. iPhone batteries, iPhone wow. CPUs getting ramped down. Like you could, It's yeah. just one of those. And then there's also a, a big Reddit thread that seems to think, and I, I'll, I'm i going to start this off straight, straight up by saying it feels pretty debunked. That's 98 new tweets at me, sorry. Okay, so um, there's... There's a really big Reddit thread, like I mentioned before, on our Apple um, talking about a lawsuit between Apple and it's kind of between a patent issued in 2002 for a company called Jawbone, but now that company is owned by a patent troll. Um, I don't called think Jawbone. called Jawbone yeah, Innovations, like, I think. Is yeah, like like what jo- I think Jawbone straight up went out of business and then mm-hmm. another company bought them, renamed themselves Jawbone yeah. and was like, we own the patent portfolio now. Yeah. 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 So yeah. the reason I don't think this is that, despite this, I I don't know. Have you guys seen this link to you? It's been on our subreddit. It's been all over our Apple. It's been all over, like, kind of everywhere. I'm going to guess this. I, like, skimmed it, and it struck me as such a, like, deep cut conspiracy that I dismissed it. Yeah. Also, I, if, it's, if, it's a, if it's a lawsuit, it's, like, 
public information, right? If it is. And, and the biggest issue with this is, is this lawsuit seems to be mostly about microphone arrays and more things in terms of smart speakers rather than specifically yeah, noise, cancellation. noise cancellation and like oh. AirPods Max. Okay. Um, so despite the huge thread being there, there's a pretty decent comment that I also can't prove is completely right. <laughs> seeming to debunk it. It's all very confusing. Um, but I like, what do we think is the problem here? Like what, so we have no we have no official response from Apple. No, and okay. I, so I think I can start this off by saying I think the biggest issue here is that there is nothing from Apple. Like this has become widespread enough to where there's headlines. The fact that Apple's not saying what these updates are doing seems mm -hmm. to be the biggest issue here because either people are getting something less than what they paid for, or Apple is now just like because of a small update they made that may be beneficial to the user. People are going on all sorts of different tirades of what could be happening. And the whole tech landscape is kind of freaking out about this because Apple just won't communicate properly. Yeah, that's so I guess Apple is one of those companies where they like to communicate that stuff as little as possible. In the off chance that this podcast is out of date by the time it comes out, I'm going <laughs> to predict what Apple's statement is. Okay. <clears throat> AirPods Max have great noise cancellation that cancels out Lots of awful frequencies with amazing technology and an array of microphones on the outside. We regularly push updates to AirPods Max to improve the customer experience. Yeah. That's... Avoid the question. Complete non-answer is probably yeah. what I'm expecting. No, listen, I haven't heard any difference, and I also don't know if I have the new or old firmware on my AirPods Max, so I couldn't tell you if I've mm -hmm. noticed anything worse. I'm probably going to get on a flight tomorrow and go, oh, you know what? I do hear a little bit more noise. It was apparently from <laughs> last May. So last you May? Probably oh, I've haven't. flown many 2021? times. 2021? Uh, oh, no, no, this no, no. came this out May, in this September. Okay. Yeah, this last May. So okay. if you've updated your AirPods since May... I also don't know if I have. Do they update in the background? I have no idea. Because my Sony headphones, there's any. like a process to or update the firmware. Yeah. So you can see in the app what your firmware where is and an update will pop up and go do you want to update are you yeah, sure it's going right. to like be disconnected for a while and then you have to do it right airpods max i don't know what the process is for updating the firmware so i yeah. couldn't tell you if i'm on the new firmware i might just be on my original firmware i believe they update in the background while they are simultaneously connected to your phone via bluetooth and in the case i think that those two conditions need to be met okay I so there's a pretty good chance they don't use the case I then they'll die the case yeah, I thought there's no way you do Yeah, on. they don't turn off if you don't put them in the case, yeah, right? They, Remember they, how they don't they have They never really button. turn off, right? They just go into ultra low energy mode or whatever. If you leave them out the case, they will be like ready to pair for a while before they go into ultra low energy mode. And if you put, up the, put them in the case, then they just immediately go to low energy mode. This feels dumb. The case I, is so beautiful. Yeah. Why would you not put it in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these, I don't own these. These sound like the most frustrating headphones. They're annoying because they don't fold down very much and you, you basically have to use the case that it comes with. Yeah. And so, so I, I bring them around in, a, in my backpack, and they are the entire top half of my backpack. Wow. And they're they're very annoying to travel with. But mm. they sound really good. They pair instantly to my phone, and they have great noise cancellation. So huh. I'm like, fine, this is my Good noise cancellation. <laughs> well, I also, yeah, I would yeah. love to hear the difference. So for, I, for additional context, like, I remember during the summer, Quinn was tweeting out, like, I'm pretty sure that the noise cancellation on these have gotten significantly worse. And then... I just started seeing a lot of random tweets about it, and then The Verge put out an, art an article called I'm, I'm pretty convinced, sure, yeah, I think I I'm saw convinced that. the AirPods Max after noise cancellation has gotten worse. And they were just like, here's all of my stuff, here's some other tweets to back me up. I'm definitely, like, it feels like it. And then the Artings thing came yeah. out fairly recently. That was like a week or two ago. Okay. Can we have those, those ears where we can, like, measure noise cancellation? So I but think we don't have the old firmware. We'd have to have their old firmware. Uh, I think, though, Ellis, did you create some sort of... I, yeah, I have a lot to say okay. about, about all this. Please, um, school us. One, yeah. I, think, I think it's a really good point. <clears throat> I think it's a really good point that um, this lawsuit probably doesn't have a lot to yeah. do with it. Okay. Because the thing that everyone's kind of conveniently leaving out of this is that Jawbone is suing like every tech company right now. Like they're suing Google and you could be like, oh, well, Google makes noise canceling earbuds too. But they're also suing... Amazon, who doesn't, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, but Amazon does make products that have beamforming microphones in them. You know, so it's my it's a microphone is. related it, it, lawsuit. It really seems like it's a microphone related lawsuit. Um, yeah. You know, the the big thing is like when I was looking at the ratings, artings test, <laughs> and I just want to. I guess I'll like 
throw this out in front before like people start tweeting angrily at us. Um, I was paid by Apple to say all of this. <laughs> Tim Cook is actually wiring money to Western Union. Right after this, Sick. I'm going to run to the bank. Um, so yeah, just before anyone calls me out on Twitter, you're right. Um, <laughs> No. JK. Um, yeah, completely. Yeah, total joke. Uh, but um, uh, looking at the ratings test, um, they only have the post firmware results oh. on their website, at least that I could find. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. it's hidden through a tab that I didn't click through this morning, but I couldn't find it. Um, and I found screenshots of older tests, but those older tests don't have a date on them. And in between beginning to test them and this new firmware, they updated their test bench. And they updated their test bench specifically Dang. to have more accuracy in the lower frequencies. And if you look at this screenshot, there's also about a 10 decibel difference in the lower frequencies um, with noise canceling off, like on their pink noise. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know how to trust those screenshots. But the the biggest thing for me about this whole controversy, I mean, I guess the two biggest things. One, every company that makes noise canceling products has this scandal. It's happened to Sony. It's happened to Bose. Like everyone loves to be like, they're making them worse. And and the big thing is that hearing is like by far our most. I mean, maybe other than smell, <laughs> but hearing is like our most subjective sense. Yeah. Like like we don't have reliable ears. And like something I, I always think about is how like our eyes can see uh, like 300 terahertz of bandwidth as far as energy goes, our ears only go 20 to 20K. It's like yeah. it's like our eyes are so much more sensitive and can process this like huge amount of information that our ears can't. And sort of like demonstrate this, you know, this is completely unscientific before all of the bros come out and are like, no, 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 this is, this, yes, this is a very unscientific Audio test. Audio file Twitter. But I recorded David this morning just like a few seconds of David. Oh, that's I, what that was used for? <laughs> and I took some uh, some field recordings of just like being on the street in downtown Atlanta, like right in the center of the city. Mm -hmm. And I took what ratings claimed that uh, their noise, that that AirPods Max noise cancellation EQ curve looks like. And I applied it to the Apple, uh, to the Atlanta sound. And then I also took what they claimed the old one was or whatever that screenshot I could found I could find. So if you guys can tell me which one of these oh, perfect. has better noise canceling or versus worse tests. noise canceling. Get out so, your trivia boards. Here we go. <laughs> um, so this is number one. You're listening to the Waveform Podcast. And this is number two. You're listening to the Waveform Podcast. This is number one again. You're listening to the Waveform Podcast. And you're listening to You're two. listening to the Waveform Podcast. Okay. I think one has slightly better noise cancellation That's than That's what two. I was going to say. Are we all in agreement? Slightly. <laughs> I was going to say that as well. <laughs> now that you ask me, I'm same. not sure anymore. But yeah, that's what I think. But that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like all these people are coming it's out minor. of the Wordix and being like, oh, it's gotten so much worse. And it's like... Even rating says it's like it's an amount that most people it's like imperceptible to. Yeah. I think. Mm. And so I yeah. The other thing is that the the wait was I right? I yeah. don't know. We're, yeah, you, you, guys, you guys were right. <laughs> Let's okay. Yeah. yeah, we were all right. I'm uh, sorry. It was, it was killing me inside. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, this is totally unscientific, but like that had like six decibels of difference mm -hmm. in some frequencies. You know what I mean? Like these weren't small cuts I was making, and it's still like almost imperceptible. Um, I know nothing about audio. Well, and the other thing is that <laughs> these, he these headphones <laughs> have microphones on the inside of the cups, right? And so what they're doing there is they're actually listening to what's going on in between your ear and the driver. And that information is playing a big part into, oh, I need to be taking out more of this. Oh, I'm taking out too much of this, right? Yeah. Um, and if those microphones get gunked up, by your dirty skin and your oily hair and whatever. Usage over time. They're going to work less. And I yeah. couldn't find a single comment of someone being like, yeah, I took some blue tack and cleaned out the microphones. Yeah. Yeah, this is like a... There, I always think like when I when I listen to... When I read audio file based reviews of like headphones and audio products and there's all this description of like all everything that happens in each little frequency and the sibilance and the sound stage and every and the the bass and the sub bass and all that stuff i always just think like oh i guess it sounds pretty good like if if you just boil it down to like how much are you paying and does it sound good usually you can boil it down to it's expensive and it sounds good 
and above a certain number it's just personal preference like like to use another car analogy if you take like five of the best sports cars in the world all of them are over 200 grand and you take one of them and you make it a quarter of a second slower in the eighth quarter mile something like that most people would never feel the difference they would still feel ballistically fast but at some level there is a person who can kind of perceive a little bit of that difference mm -hmm. And it's like, if you are that person, then yes, you should be shopping in that echelon and, and picking between the craziest of the crazy. And you deserve to be outraged over the six decibel difference in the AirPods Max that costs $550. But for most people who are just getting on a plane and don't want to hear the baby next to them, these still work just fine. And I think I'm going to be okay with that. I'd be mad if they like are bad at noise canceling now. It feels like some dramatic difference yeah. where now they don't work anymore. But uh, I'm not too worried at the at the expense of probably also sounding like Tim Cook's in my pocket, I'm not too I'm not too worried. <laughs> we need you to report back after and that flight you have. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I think it's especially true. You know, we were talking about this when the new AirPods Pro came out, and it never really made it into like a full video. But like Apple headphones are now untestable, right? There's so much computation happening at any given moment. You know, there's a different EQ curve for all 12 steps of the volume on an iPhone. Like it, it's literally changing to adjust oh, yeah. for how your ears perceive different frequencies and yeah. different loudnesses. So I, you know, just if you like them, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And if you don't, there's a whole company out there. It's called Bose. They also make great products. I'm sure you'll love them. Yeah. Sony's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Sony too. They make headphones. We're using Google Pixel Buds Pro. Yeah. Okay. Sennheiser makes headphones. Well, I was going to say, we we just got a pair of Focals in the mm -hmm. office, the Bathies, that have uh, noise canceling that I think are just fantastic. Yeah. I think when I get on a plane, the most common headphones that I see now for, because I'm, I'm a nerd, I notice what headphones people mm -hmm. are wearing. Um, there's a lot of Sony's mm -hmm. uh, over ear, mm -hmm. and there's a pretty good amount of AirPods Max, and then there's yeah. a lot of AirPods. It's crazy because it used to be the QC35s. It for used to every yeah, yeah. single yes. person. Not like, very long ago. Crazy. Not very long ago, yeah. A lot, a lot of business lot people. Of still, I do use these bows. We talked about this oh. a couple of weeks ago. For flights? Yeah. The hilarious thing about this, uh, these are the Bose earbuds 2 or i think they're quiet something. comfort I think quiet comfort QC earbuds but, yeah yeah the funny thing about these is they cut they are the best noise cancellation headphones i've ever used they cut out every frequency on a plane except for a frequency that i couldn't hear when i didn't have them in <laughs> from the air conditioning there's one nice. air conditioning frequency that i can't hear when i don't have them in but it's just it doesn't cut those out so That's it's like funny. <laughs> like oh, the no. whole time i'm on the plane and i'm just like oh man yeah, yeah. But otherwise, they're great. So cool. So anyway. I think the uh, the end to this is clean your headphones out, please. Yeah, yeah. clean that shit out. Clean and I those would mics. I would love to see a response from Apple, even if yeah, you know, I would like some communicate. If they communicate what they did, we don't have twenty different Reddit you threads. You already know about. what they're gonna say. Yeah, right? yeah, it's <laughs> fair. Whatever. People love our AirPods. Yeah, Max people love devices. the noise Just cancellation. Yeah. Don't communicate. We would like to still speculate it, on the podcast. It, yeah. it is worth speculating too. You know, after I just went on that whole rant because that thing did happen a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, where when the AirPods two came out, Apple made this huge deal. They were like, "Yeah, our new silicon, yeah. it can process stuff at an incredible speed. That's why the new transparency mode is so lit." And then two they weeks ago, transparency mode they were like, the other ones. yeah, they were like, the H1 chip now supports it. Yeah. And we were like, well, what was all this that? This happens all the time in the tech industry, though. This they, is they pretty use, classic. They use, like, new stuff to say, this is the only way that this can do yeah. this, like, yeah. like Tensor or, ten, you know, and then it doesn't end up being the only way to yeah. do it. We're working on a M2 iPad Pro review where it's the same as the M1 iPad Pro. Yeah. But, but. The M2 one supports hover with the Apple Pencil. And if you yeah, if you ask Apple, like, oh, why does the M2 one support hover with the Apple Pencil? They're like, M2 is good. <laughs> and you're like, well, M2, okay. M1 was pretty good, too. I'm yeah. pretty sure you could do it with that. And then but eight, they'll never say you could. Six to eight months later. And then six months later, maybe <laughs> yeah. you can. Yeah. I'm waiting. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> well, all right. We'll see what Apple's statement is inevitably. Probably like quote mine and then when Apple comes I bet out it's with their theirs, statement. we just put them next to each other. I want to write copy for this and then we can see how exactly close. <laughs> it's a whole job. It's someone's whole job right now. They're <laughs> yeah. listening to the podcast like, yes, yes, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> 
right. well, we'll take another quick break, though. Uh, we'll talk about smart home stuff in a second, but that, of course, means we have some more trivia. Trivia, dude. <laughs> <laughs> The word metaverse was originally coined in a science fiction novel called Snow Crash. What year was that novel published? And we're looking for the closest year. I don't I, I don't know. I think I know this. I definitely don't know. Yeah. There's no, no chance. I mean, I'm going to guess a year, but it's going to be wrong. I'm probably going to be wrong. I read this Wikipedia page like 800 times, and I'm probably still wrong. But You might know too much. You might know too little. Which that puts means, Andrew in the sweet spot. Let's go. Yeah. Goldilocks. Total baby. randomness. <laughs> Incredible. This is probably closer. We'll give the point to whoever's <laughs> year is closest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Too. All right. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. Um, I have a question to ask you guys, and maybe this is a little embarrassing because I've nodded my head as you've talked about this topic in the past, <laughs> and I had no idea what we were talking about. So <laughs> Confessional. Matter has been brought up quite a few times. Mm -hmm. I know there was something about matter that happened pretty recently. Uh -huh. um, I don't know what it is, like pretty much at all. Okay. So do no. you know? have any idea, Marcus? No, that's fair. It is, it's kind of been a background development for me, and... I feel like I basically just know what it's supposed to be, which is, okay, we have a bunch of different smart home ecosystems. They run on their own standards or protocols or they talk to each other. And in the future, there should be a universal protocol where they all talk to each other. They just they all need to have this radio or whatever where they all talk to each other and then the, the ecosystem walls are broken down and everything is happy and harmonious. All right. I know David knows like all about See, it. So how wrong uh, am I, please? Every well, time Marquez is like, I heard about this oh, like okay. kind of a little bit once. Am I kind of right? I uh, I don't know if I know about it. Here's the perfect explanation. <laughs> oh, well. <wow. laughs> I was I wanted to cue this up as kind of like yes, yes, no, where like, well, but Marquez is definitely on the it's maybe. Like maybe. Yeah, yes, I'm at no, and detail. I want David to explain it to us there's and detail. us to try and explain it back. After. Our, our reply so, all. So, yeah. Yeah, Tribute. Professor David. Yes. Please explain in a longer form. <clears throat> okay. What is matter and, and does it matter? It absolutely matters. Okay, perfect. If it works. Okay. So, huh. everyone's hoping it works. Uh, okay, so currently in the smart home ecosystem, right? Way back when Amazon Alexa was first invented and the Echo came out and it was like one of the first smart home products that was available, right? Amazon uh, had to create something that would allow the Echo devices to talk to smart home stuff, right? Yep. This is not dissimilar to the fact that Tesla made its own charger because there was not a charging standard at the time. And now we have this kind of mess where Tesla has its own charger and then there's Chattimo and all this stuff. Lightning, right? USB-C. Sorry, yeah. go on. Hmm. So as the smart home ecosystem built out and players like Apple with HomeKit and Google with Google Assistant came onto the market, they kind of just like made their own stuff. And so now when you go to the store, when you go to Best Buy or like some store and you buy smart home stuff, there's all these labels on the boxes that say like, works with Alexa, works with Google Assistant, works with Apple HomeKit. <clears throat> And this is a big problem for a lot of reasons because you can't just go out and like buy smart lights now. You have to be like, okay, well, what's my beacon device that I'm using as my main voice assistant to percolate this stuff throughout my house, right? <clears throat> and so much like you said, Matter is a protocol that is supposed to unify all of these things into one thing because they all currently use different protocols to interact. Uh, you might know the hue has like these bridges yep those bridges are a way for it to work with many different protocols because it's like a it's like a rosetta stone it's like a translator or a babble fish ah. like one of those protocols gets sent it hits the um the bridge and then that converts it into the other protocol that needs to be used for the light or whatever okay right so Matter is like amazing because 300 companies, 300 plus companies oh. that make smart home equipment, including Google, Apple, Amazon, and then like all of the main smart home accessory players like TP-Link and like all these guys came together and they say, okay, cool. We're all going to use Matter because they realized 
that while there are many benefits to having walled gardens, there is also limits to having walled gardens. You yep. know, yep. If you are trying to make an Apple Home Kit <laughs> house, but you can only build out, you can only use so many accessories for that Apple Home Kit house. But you want to buy this one accessory that only works with Google Assistant. Maybe you think about moving over to Google Assistant. So Apple actually does have some incentive to actually go out and support this ubiquitous ecosystem. Okay. Right. Um, now the really cool thing th this is not dissimilar to how the internet was formed in the first place, right? It's basically matter used to be used to be called chip, which is connected home over IP. And if you know anything about internet protocols, that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Because it basically means that all of this stuff is coming through just one singular protocol that is coming through your home. So one fundamental part of matter is called thread. I was and just about to ask, because I keep hearing, I, I literally just, I just Googled what is thread. Because oh, okay. I remember uh -huh. that yeah. it's a thing that's connected to matter. Okay. Yeah. So matter is actually just an application layer that's sitting over Wi-Fi plus thread. And thread is this really awesome thing that basically allows each individual smart home device, device to be its own little beacon. So they're all communicating with each other. Because oh, cool. the current way that things work are you go to your Google Nest Hub and you say, hey, turn on the light in my bedroom. And that Nest Hub has to connect to the internet, send that data to a Google server somewhere, send it back to your home Wi-Fi, ping it off your Wi-Fi, hit the light, and then turn on the light. But Thread is basically you're making your own little intranet mm -hmm. mesh network. Oh, and the reason cool. it's called Thread, if you could think about this, is that you have all these little devices, and they're all communicate with communicating with each other yeah. So like this light is going to this smart audio speaker, which is going to this. And there's kind of like data being sent through all of these devices at the same time to each other. So it's more secure because you have your own little intranet. It's way faster. Faster, yeah. Okay. Way faster, which is great for like smart lights, right? Yeah. Because now you don't say turn on my light and then it's like ding. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. kind of instant. As soon as it recognizes the command, it sends it. Yeah. And yeah. the amazing thing about something like Matter is say you are using uh, Amazon Alexa and you have a you have an Echo in your home, but you really want to use like a Google Nest Audio for your music. Now you can tell Alexa to play music on your Google Nest Audio. Hmm. Okay. That's so I'm building this analogy in my head, kind of, and it's how I'm going to try to understand it all, Yeah. which is like virtual ports. So, you know, we have lightning and USB-C and mini USB, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm imagining like, you know, Alexa's or Amazon's ecosystem, they all used one imaginary port to talk to each other. Yeah. And then made for iPhone or HomeKit was a different port. So now if you wanted to use things from two different ecosystems, they'd have different ports on them. Mm -hmm. And so something like the Philips Hue Bridge would be like a box with all of the ports on it where you, it's like an adapter yeah, and adapter. It, would, it would plug into two different things, which is kind of cool. And then it does make sense now if this new big universal port is coming along to support it. Do they also, I guess, continue to support their own individual standards along the side? I guess it's fine. But I if believe, everything supports matter, yeah. then it's whatever. I believe they can. Um, so a lot of devices are going to be launching from this month going forward that will have the little matter logo on it, which Sweet. just makes means you can just set it up super fast and it's really awesome and easy. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of companies have committed to updating their devices to also support Matter in the future. Oh, that's good. You should still check on the companies that are doing that, though, and also look at their like reliability and how often, how likely they are to actually do that. OK. Um, yeah, and like devices will be able to work with Matter, but automations and things like that still rely on the oh. individual ecosystem. Okay. So if you have like a routine or something. That's Which still going to rely on like the Google Hub or the Apple HomeKit situation. Got it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's it's great because it's way faster. It's more secure, and then everything's like a mesh network too, which is cool. So if you have your Google Nest Hub in one room, and then you've got a random Philips Hue bulb in the next room, and then the next room past that, you've got some Wise bulb. Even if that Wise bulb was not like able to connect directly to your Google Nest Hub. Because there's devices in between, they literally work as mesh networks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. My current smart home situation, it's fine, and it, it works OK, because I have a bunch of accessories that all have Google's virtual port, if you will. Um, but they are still annoying, because Nest does 
make their own like mesh network based on their own protocol. And so like I was trying to connect my my uh, lock on the back door the other day, mm. and it kept trying to use the doorbell on my front door as the as the mesh network thing. So it wanted to be connected to both at once. And I was running back and forth from the back door to the front door to try to be close enough to get my phone to pair to both of them so that they would talk to each other. Yeah. And it was a nightmare. <laughs> so ironically, the Nest, the old Nest before Nest got bought by Google, yeah. they were the ones that actually got this in motion. Yeah. Because they wanted this to happen. I think um, there used to be the Zigbee Alliance and Zigbee was supposed to be the like connecting thread thing. Sounds like a Muppet. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> matter, matter sounds cooler. <laughs> yeah. Zigbee Alliance yeah. is amazing. Okay. Yeah. But now it's like the the connected um, something alliance. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So they're just trying to get. And so anyway, the news. <laughs> so this has been in the works for like quite a while. Mm -hmm. And it was originally supposed to launch, I think, in 2020. Mm -hmm. And then it got delayed. And then it was going to launch last year. And then it got delayed. And then it was going to launch in June of this year. And then it got delayed again. <laughs> but the SDK actually dropped like this week, um, which is amazing, which means there could be a lot of different companies that have been ready to just like ship products that are that are matter compatible and they have the boxes printed and everything's ready for the holiday season they've just been waiting for matter to actually drop the official SDK so that they can use it um, but expect to see some products on the holiday shelves coming out for this year that have the logo and then you should look up like a list of uh, products that are either updating or have committed to updating. By the way, that logo, just because I looked it up because yeah. I didn't know what it is, it looks like three curved arrows pointing inwards. Yeah, which I think if, that's the that idea. the best way of... It makes okay. sense. Makes sense. Just, just in case you don't have, you know, you're in the car, you can't see what this looks yeah. like and yeah, you're yeah. going to Best Buy and you see this now. I think Matter. that's sort of the idea. It's like, it's like Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, Apple HomeKit, and they're yeah. all just like pointing towards each other. Yeah, that's funny. That was the premise of my home tech video when I made it. And I got a, a couple of comments that were very highly rated, which was, oh, there's this one service that lets you connect all three of them. And it's like, it's kind of a hack, but it kind of works. And you can you can actually use things from HomeKit and Google Assistant all in the same thing. Yeah. And it's, it now sounds like this is actually going to be a tenable solution for yeah. like most people to, to, to get just whatever they want. The fact that you can just go to the store and just buy smart yes. home equipment and just use it. And yeah. The setup process is also supposed to be way easier. Matter is trying to get everybody to have like just a QR code on their box mm -hmm. and it sets up through Matter too. Um, but you That's choose awesome. you you still choose like the voice assistant that you want to use, and you have to use that voice assistant for everything. But you know the fact that you can play music on your Nest Audio from your Alexa speaker, like yeah, that's pretty it's pretty dope. lit. You yeah, know, it's pretty just, cool too. What? It's completely open source. Yeah, which is like all these giant so, private companies that yeah. had their own situation going on. How do they get them to agree on this? That's this what I'm like saying. The I, most well, <laughs> incredible thing ever. The research that I did, like from what I understand, it's it's literally that they saw like limits to their walled gardens. That, oh, they're that, like, I mean, we there are, can't get enough. Like Apple was like, yeah, there's a there's a good amount of HomeKit stuff, but look at that Alexa stuff over there. There's so many good things that we don't have and people aren't making for HomeKit. What if we could get that? supported so people would use Siri more often. Yeah, exactly. I see. They want to use their their service way more often so they're willing to let all of these third parties just like work with everybody. Yeah. I mean, do you remember Quinn's smart home video maybe like a year ago? Like there are so many hacks and stuff in there because HomeKit seems to be a, a couple steps behind in terms of like products that work well with it. So HomeKit. I feel like this is awesome for people who use HomeKit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Amazon to me, it would always be like Amazon has the biggest selection, but the most variance in quality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, HomeKit has the smallest selection, but the highest overall quality of things. And yeah. then Google is somewhere in the middle yeah. with like some Nest stuff and stuff kind of usually works with Google Assistant. I think we're going to probably do another Assistant comparison video. I still like Google Assistant the best. Mm -hmm. So I just want to use the Google Assistant stuff and are that we, locks me out of the good HomeKit stuff. Are we all Google Assistant people? Yeah. Yeah. I that's what so. I'm using at home. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Google Assistant, I mean, I mean, traditionally at least has been like the best in terms of like asking you questions I love it does yeah. locally and yeah yeah and i would just rather use google for those kind of things because if you're just asking questions from the internet google is obviously the one to <laughs> yeah go to. very fair yeah so yeah wow yeah Good it's pretty matters. awesome I'm, i've just been like waiting for this forever and it's been the news has been trickling trickling out and i've like andrew said i've randomly dropped like oh but matter we'll fix this like on the podcast i definitely it was like two podcasts ago you're just like something matter and i was like 
yeah, man. <laughs> sounds great. Wow. Yeah. Well, now Can't that we wait. know, it does sound really good. No, no, I'm pumped. I'm most pumped for the fact that it's just like within itself and yeah. things might happen faster. I'm so tired of being like, hey, G word, um, like turn on the lights. And then I walk like all the way into this still dark room and then the lights pop on. Yeah. yeah. I also have, I have two Philips Hue lights and I don't have a Philips Hue bridge. So every time I walk into that room, I have to open the Philips Hue app to turn those lights on. Yeah. And I'm so tired. Okay. Yeah. The Philips Hue bridges will be updated, but future Philips Hue bulbs will not even need them. Okay, I'm going to throw out all my Philips Because Hue of stuff. thread, because everything's a mesh network, right? Oh, but in theory, they can update my Philips Hue lamps. Yes. To support Brit or matter. Matter, yeah. I hope they do as many things as possible, update them. Yeah. That'd how nice. how often do you change sorry, this is kind of sidetracked, but sure. how often do you change the colors of your Philips Hue bulbs? Almost never. Get a smart switch. It's so much better than a smart light bulb. I've heard that. Smart switch. So like rather than in my house, I got rid of all my smart light bulbs and I have a smart switch so I can still physically turn the switch off all the time without affecting if I can use my voice command. I should do that. so much better. There are lamps. Oh, there are lamps. But that's fine though if the switch talks to the lamps. Okay. Yeah. Because right, it's just a room with like one light in the middle. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I use the lamps to like light up the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if I just have a switch on the wall that just turns the lamps on, I don't care about the color. Yeah. Just turn them on. That'd yeah. be great. The cool thing that too is that you could use one switch to turn on a whole group of lamps, right? Yeah, it'd be two. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That'd be cool. So I'm going to get a bunch of smart plugs, but I'm currently waiting to see what, over the next like week or two, there should be official smart plugs like dropping with matter okay i'm so excited I'm i ready. want to buy matter supported every i'm just gonna excited. keep using candles to light my apartment <laughs> smart candles no can't even are they even rgb candles like <laughs> rgb what, candles. what is this someone replied i tweeted that i just want way more lamps in my life and then yesterday i bought seven different lamps and someone Br- said what <laughs> you bought seven <laughs> lamps bro were I, any of them from ikea oh my god no ikea has great lamps okay they were so weird and so cool i got this one that's like a it's like a gyroscope globe you know, the like weird, like rotating around itself kind of thing. Does it move? Where's the light? No. It's just in the center of the. Globe. Oh, it moves around it? It doesn't actually move. It just looks It cool. just looks like oh. it should move. It was $30. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't expect $30. Okay. I wouldn't expect right. it to move. That's fair. fair. But uh, I'm going to buy a bunch of smart plugs. I'm just waiting for matter supported smart plugs. Smart plug or smart bulb? I bought a bunch of dumb bulbs that are the exact color temperature that I want okay. because I'm not someone that would change the so smart color. Plug for that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, so tight. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for a whole new category of tech. Yes, That's and thank sick. you for explaining it to us. Thank you for that. Now I know. Yeah, and now look at me. Now we'll we'll have our minds blown and trivia answers by things we didn't know because I definitely don't know some of these. I think number one, I'm gonna get wrong. All right. Well, trivia time. Do you have a whiteboard? Yeah, you do. Uh, yeah. I think we have both over here. Have yours. So Thanks. the score, Marquez has 13. Oh, yeah. Andrew has 11. David has 8. I wasn't on the last two episodes. Me, 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 me. I was in Yosemite. <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> yeah, I, to be honest, if I could trade some points and to go to Yosemite, I would do it. <laughs> Is it worth wow. three points Such to go to Yosemite? Especially since we have no perceived <laughs> prize yet. So. <laughs> okay, question number one. In 1999, a company called Zip2 was acquired by Compaq for $307 million, which modern-day tech juggernaut was one of the founders. Who wants to go first? Just flip it over. Oh, and read it out loud as you flip for our okay. audio users, yeah, audio listeners. You still thinking? I'm still thinking. I'll let you think. That's okay. Take your time. <laughs> no pressure. You're just five points behind. Oh. <laughs> Give me the ratio, okay? Okay. All right. I've gotten 344 Twitter replies since the last half. <laughs> oh my god. No Twitter updates this episode. That's crazy. That's a, might be sure? a new record. Although I'll, as Ellis Yeah, been checking, we'll double check, but I checking. was checking and yeah, he was just tweeting about rockets and stuff, which is okay. fine. That's okay. probably what it should be focusing That's on. <laughs> if we're on. If we That's want fair. him to tweet about something, it's the rockets <laughs> yeah. and the cars. Yeah. Cybertruck updates. Yeah, how's Cybertruck doing? No tweets. <laughs> no tweets on it. You got one? Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. David, oh, you want to say man, first? Man, I suck. Elon. I also wrote Elon. Hey. I also wrote Elon. <laughs> <laughs> and you wrote Bill Gates. Yeah. Wait, you said it was a 
he competitor sold, to Compaq? Oh, sold to Compaq? No, it was, yeah, it was acquired by Compaq for $307 oh, million. Dollars, and your, he got 7% of that, I think, something like that, which was $22 million. Yeah, Elon's been part of so many, like, micro-major mm-hmm. tech things, like the PayPal mafia and all that stuff. I just yeah, I figured, part, I do. I figured Elon was, would be good because of all the Twitter madness. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember reading that. Yeah. Zip I don't. Too. I wonder what they did. <laughs> They provided city guide based softwares to newspapers and other publications. Oh, I thought this was a compression thing. I was you just would so think, right? off on I, this I entire website. It's okay. Yeah. Zip <laughs> recruiter. <laughs> That's a free right. ad, man. <laughs> wow. No time passed since we answered that last question. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Question number two. I don't know. The word? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to write a year now. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, what year did the movie come out? No, it's a book. It's a book. Wait, yeah. Finish the question. <laughs> okay, I already wrote it. The word metaverse was originally coined mm-hmm. in a science fiction novel called Snow Crash. What year was the novel published? And we're looking for the closest year. So only one of you is getting a point, unless you two of you get the exact year. But. What if mm-hmm. three of us get the exact year? Then we win. If yeah, we all wrote the same then year. we all lose because then we have the same amount of points. There's no shot we all wrote the same year. I, right. I swear I've read this Wikipedia page eight thousand times and I don't remember, but I'm guessing. Ready? <clears throat> nice. Oh, we're kind of close. So I wrote 1969. Yeah. I wrote David. 1982. <laughs> I wrote 1972. Oh, really? But who's the closest? Who do you like, think is the closest? Me. Yeah, well, it is you. I was gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> Smartest man alive, baby. Uh, was it damn, 19, I can't. Be, man, wait, it's been a while it? since you guys have gotten one right. So, so he 96? wrote that. Was it ninety six? It was ninety two. Oh, mm. oh. Wow. What? I, if I had guessed my second, no guess, I way. Been. Really? Yeah. Felt very. Snow Crash came reason. out in ninety two. I did think it was going to be the eighties too, but it was ninety two. I thought this book kicked off the whole cyberpunk aesthetic. I don't know that. I only know that metaverse. Oh, maybe that was the book. necromancer. Also, don't know that. <laughs> Oh, anyway. I read books. <laughs> I don't. I didn't. That read. was the most convincing. <laughs> well, I, I got it you. right. Yeah. Was it was really yeah. 1992. I could have come up with this concept in like 1930. <laughs> this guy. This guy is not that smart. Oh yeah, then why didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Prove Check it. Me. Uh, Sounds easy. What who's were you say, doing in 1930? Who's to say my grandma didn't? Okay, that was it. Okay, I was ready for the third one. I was like, I don't remember the third question. I always want a third one. Maybe not till our extra special. Uh, Trivia Se- Bonanza. Season finale. I haven't decided if it's a trivia bonanza or a trivia extravaganza. I like extravaganza. What about extravaganza? Extrava bonanza. It's extra. It is extra. But bonanza is so fun. It's like, like bonanza. So a- extravaganza is an extra bonanza. <laughs> well, bonanza? I can't argue I'll, with that one. I'll check the math on Where that, did the G come from? Sure. I don't know. Yeah. What's the etymology of extravaganza? I would like to know. Extra. That's a good place to end this podcast. Extravaganza. <laughs> Extravaganza. Thanks for listening this week. We appreciate you all. Uh, thanks for subscribing. The Clips channel is close to a certain milestone. If you haven't headed over there and watched the clips, you should go subscribe. But also subscribe to the main co- podcast because that's when you get the first dibs on everything we talk about during the week. Catch you guys <laughs> in the next one. See you. We're wrong about Twitter. Again. We form is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Robin. We are partnered with Vox Media Podcast Network, and our intro outro music was created by Ving Sill.